and is to welcome back new and existing subscribers on this Monday, March 1st. And if you believe the reports, a few significant things will be going on this month, and hopefully it's news of upcoming and new games on these next-gen platforms. As we know, there are a lot of games in development. Kicking off proceedings with some of the catch-up stuff since I was unable to upload on Friday, following the rather lackluster State of Play presentation, I mean, it wasn't the worst, certainly not the best, though I made it a point to advise my subscribers beforehand and even tweeted to temper expectations. It really was just an update on the uh, upcoming game releases. Standouts of the show were Final Fantasy VII Remake, got a PS5 makeover reveal dubbed Final Fantasy Remake Integrade, due out in June as a free upgrade to owners of the original PS4 release. The PS4 version is part of PlayStation Plus March offerings, but doesn't include the PS5's visual and performance upgrades, including a locked 60 FPS performance mode. Returnal is still set for March, just weeks away, and it's looking a lot more interesting, though I'm not sure about that £70 price tag. Now, a pretty awesome old-school kung fu action game named Saifu or Sifu. Kana Bridge of Spirits looked incredible in the latest trailer. Stunning Pixar. DreamWorks, you know, Disney visual quality, dare I say. Bethesda's PS5 exclusive Death Loop looks like awesome fun and had a spectacular James Bond 007 inspired intro, but there was no Horizon Zero Dawn 2 news or no God of War Ragnarok, not even Ratchet and Clank news. Much like how I felt about Gran Turismo 7 beforehand, and that got delayed recently, confirming my suspicions. I'm not totally convinced God of War or Horizon, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn's sequel will make it out this year, though I'd love to be wrong on that. Sadly, I get that it was a business decision, trimming the fat, so to speak, but Sony has decided to close its long-running Japan studio and will reform as Team Asobo, the development studio behind Astro's Playroom, presumably to focus on future Astro titles on PlayStation VR and or otherwise. Sony has said the studio's performance in terms of game output and commercial success was unsatisfactory. This news came after Sony made assurances that it was not giving up on its domestic home market, Japan. It's no secret Sony really has centralized PlayStation operations in the US, which seemingly more focuses on Western game development these days, although Sony insists it has made huge investments and partnerships with key Japanese game studios and publishers in order to you know, push its newest gaming hardware, PS5 in the region, though that's quite a tall order with Switch in the way. Only Sony knows what the future has in store for Japanese game development slash projects. Now, a recent restock of PS5 inventory has pushed Spider-Man PS5 version to the top of the charts, currently sitting at number two, which is interesting. The new Mario game on Switch holds that much coveted number one spot. I think due to the limited supply of PS5 units globally, I expect games that released, you know, months ago suddenly climb the charts as more and more gamers get their hands on the much sought after high in demand PS5. And yeah, sure, it's pretty easy to say the PS5 and Series X and S consoles should have launched, you know, in 2021 at some point. But remember, those very same YouTubers who are saying this today are the same YouTubers uploading videos criticizing Sony for its slow rollout of PS5 information. And they wanted PS5 2020 release date reveals already. And that was, you know, pre-release. So now they're saying, you know, we could have waited, but ah. Back in October, you know, they were gagging for it. Now they have a PS5, it's, oh, we could have waited. Yeah, until 2021. A bit hypocritical, but hey, welcome to YouTube. Now I do agree with Xbox-centric YouTuber, and we don't agree on much, Mads Gaming. There's just too much emphasis on shoehorning ray tracing into PS5 and, you know, Series X games just for the sake of it. This often comes at the expense of performance. Many ray traced games are 30 FPS only. Now I've been saying forever that I prefer 60 frames per second, 4K dynamic or otherwise in every game than forced ray tracing at 30 FPS. Hello Watch Dogs Legion. Let's hope the dev team update Watch Dogs Legion with a, you know, ray tracing enable slash disable option and add a sweet 60 FPS mode. The game's crying out for it, if you please Ubisoft. 
And finally, rumor has it Xbox will hold a what's new on Xbox and I'm assuming it's a digital event or a promotional video at the very least, with Xbox boss Phil Spencer may or may not having teased the potential of a Death Stranding coming to Game Pass on Xbox and PC and or something else Kojima related. Also, this event could tie into that $7.5 billion Bethesda slash Zenimax deal. Perhaps we'll get more details, some more color as the deal is set to close this month. And even Xbox exec Aaron Greenberg has already taken to Twitter and shot down the Elder Ring reveal rumors. So we know that's not a thing, not for March anyway. Time will tell and uh, Microsoft certainly has a lot to show and tell, likewise Sony, and it's all slowly starting to unravel. Though what say you? Go ahead, sound off, share your thoughts and opinions on today's video because that unfortunately brings us to the end of the news. And let's continue the discussion in the video comments. And uh, for all your gaming news, rumor, and plausible speculation, yes, hit the like button. Of course, subscribe, hit the notification bell, help us reach like minded gamers. And yeah, please feel free to share the video. Consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon. You'll find a link in this video's description. I thank you for that extra support. But well, that concludes our time together today. Thank you for hanging out with me. Until next time, play games, not corporations.